hello, Glucon. Oh my gosh, uh, I wish I could be there. Uh, I'm getting very weary of doing this whole virtual thing as we all are, but uh, we're going to make the best of it. And uh, so I'm going to do a presentation called Your Callers Are Hanging Up, Find Out Why. And it is told through the uh, memes of those snarky some e-cards, so it should be fun. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, make sure that if you're watching online, submit it through the chat utility or just store them up for the end for live questions because I love questions. Um, so without further ado, yeah, so those of you who uh, may know my voice, I'm the voice of the asterisk open source PBX. I'm also the official voice of free switch, free PBX, and of course, Sangoma as well. So that's the open source market. I also do a lot of voicing on platforms that are not so open source. So I've done some work with Cisco Meraki, Mitel, Shortel, uh, Bell. I'm actually about to start a big project with uh, Bell Canada. So I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, this is just sort of a little short list of regular clients that I work for on a regular basis. So uh, PetSmart, I record for almost every day. During the pandemic, when it first started, um, they of course were closing stores, opening new stores. And of course, uh, there was changes in their protocol with you know their grooming salon and that sort of thing. So yeah, I record almost every day for PetSmart. Samsung Canada is a huge client of mine. And um, I'm doing more and more pharmaceutical work for people like Merck and Janssen. So you know when you see a magazine ad for medications and there's all sorts of side effects for drugs that you're taking, so all of those side effects need to be read on their information lines for the sight impaired and for those with literacy issues. So those are always uh, quite a challenge to read because of course they want it to sound conversational and a lot of that isn't conversational. So yeah, so lots of experience. So this presentation is all about caller frustration. And of course, anyone who works in telephony knows that it's rampant and it, it may actually be getting worse. And we've all been in that position of being in an IVR that's been just so confusing that you have no idea what you're doing and the, the choices are confusing you and we just end up getting frustrated. So this presentation will talk about caller frustrations and things that we can do about eliminating those frustrations. So I'll do it sort of like in the format of a top 10 list. So the number 10 reason why callers may be hanging up in droves is that they actually hate talking on the phone. Callers, um, uh, customers are actually more uh, turnkey and more self-serve. So access through a website, through email, even chatbot are still kind of more of the preferred mode of communication. So um, yes, so if somebody calls out time to call a company, there is a good chance that their problem is either so specific or so sticky that it was not found on the FAQs of the website. And so I always say to IVR developers and writers of IVR scripts that you should probably make the assumption that callers are actually upset and they're actually probably a little pissed off. That's why they're calling to talk to a live agent. And hopefully that knowledge will help to inform the writing of the IVR and make the prompts to be a bit more intuitive and efficient and easy to use. The number nine reason why callers might be hanging up is that your choices are too similar or confusingly alike. So I, I've had this experience and you probably have too with calling into an IVR and you're thinking, well, what I'm calling about is a little bit about option number one, but it's also a little bit about option number two. And what do I do? What if I make the wrong choice and I have to go through the entire IVR tree again? So that is the big fear that callers have. And yes, it all stems from the idea that the IVR prompts are just a, a little too confusingly alike. The number eight reason why callers are frustrated is that a horrible IVR is expected. So phone hell is expected. Now, when I tell people what I do for a living, nine times out of 10, people are like, oh, wow, that is really neat. I've never met anyone who actually voices telephone systems. But a huge amount of people also will respond with, oh, no, you're not that awful woman on the phone that wastes all my time. Yes, yes, actually, I am. 
So, um, yes, unfortunately, when you devote the time it takes to call a company, you're expecting a little bit of phone hell. But why should you? And, and why should that be the expectation? Unfortunately, it is. Number seven reason why callers might be hanging up in great big droves is that callers do not know what a good IVR is. So an IVR that's good is something that respects the caller's time and their patience and their intelligence. And unfortunately, that's a bit of a rarity and it shouldn't be. The number six reason why callers are getting more and more frustrated, they don't actually wanna take it out on the live agent, but the IVR sets them up to do so. Another thing that I always try to ask IVR writers and developers is that the emotional state of the caller can be aggravated or alleviated by the IVR. So aggravated in the way that if it's complicated and not setting the, the caller up for success, it can actually feed into that negative emotional state that they might already be calling in with. So good IVR prompts that are fast that get the caller through to a live agent as quickly as possible and with as few steps as possible can actually help to alleviate that escalated emotional state. Number five, your IVR is too confusing. So this, this e-card example seems to be an exaggeration, but I'm telling you that probably, you know, once every two weeks, I will read a prompt that says something to the effect of, you chose number one please press number two to confirm that you chose number one. It's, it's not an exaggeration. People actually put that in their menus. So ask yourself if your IVR is a maze. And the other question is, is it deliberate? Um, I've been reading more and more articles about the idea that call centers can improve their bottom line by not issuing a refund, not sending out a replacement product that the caller is calling about. So it, it's actually financially advantageous for them to the point where they just and give up. It is extremely counter to good customer service, but unfortunately, sometimes it is a deliberate measure to improve the bottom line, kind of contemplate. The number four reason why callers are getting frustrated is that your IVR is too long. Anyone who has read any of my blog material or attended any of my previous making sure that your IVR is not too long. So too many options and too wordy. I'm finding a lot of people are putting almost like a commercial in their auto attendant opening greeting where they talk about their company's history and how long they've been in business and why they're better than the competition. So all of that is great in an on-hold program where you need to fill a little bit of time and keep the caller's interest. In an auto attendant greeting, try to say in 20 words what it used to take 30 or 40 words to say and limit the amount of options to five or six maximum. Um, I actually read a system, a voice system, a system about three weeks ago that had 20 different choices way too many. The human brain can't remember any more than five or six choices. The number three reason, they want a solution to their problem. They're not interested in how your IVR helps your workflow. So they, they carve out time to call a company. And the IVR is to sort your callers. But callers don't know that. They just presume that the choices that they're given in a menu are going to ensure that they speak to a specialist. And really that is an advantage for the caller, but really the IVR is to sort callers at your end and make sure that you have somebody on staff that's dealing with that specific problem. So when I started voicing IVR quite a few years ago, I voiced it for TELUS, which is the big telephony concern here in Alberta. And <clears throat> back then I didn't even know what IVR was. And they explained it in such a way that really you know, kind of stuck with me. So IVR is almost like an escalator where people in various colored jackets are going up the escalator. And at the top, let's say all the people in the white jackets are shuttled off to the left and all miscellaneous colors are shuttled off to the right. 
And then in that stream that's going off to the right, the red jackets go off into one stream and the blue go off in another and so on. And that really is the, the mechanism of an IVR. Callers don't know that. They just presume that they're being asked to make these choices because they're going to speak to somebody who, who will deal specifically with their issue. The number two reason why callers might be getting more frustrated is a waste of time is actually perceived as a good bargain if they can arrive at a solution. So they carve out time to call a company and they expect to waste time, especially if you're calling a large company or a large government agency. I actually called Microsoft not that long ago and I took a photo of my Sangoma phone of how long I'd been on hold. And it was about an hour and 20 minutes their on hold music is pretty much ingrained in my mind. I can recall it to this day. So it's almost as though you have to sacrifice a morning or an afternoon to get to the solution of your problem. But why? Why should it be that way? But unfortunately, callers feel very, very powerless when they're on hold and when they're working their way through a frustrating IVR. The number one reason why callers give up in the whole process is that they want to feel set up for success. Their success should be a priority for your company as well, but it usually isn't, and it should be. I personally feel that the wasting of the caller's time and patience is inexcusable. Their time and patience should be a priority. So how do we fix these issues? As for number 10, the idea that we hate talking on the phone and that we're really sort of uh, turnkey driven, acknowledge that callers prefer other forms of contact other than talking on the phone. Um, and one of my colleagues, and you probably know him well, I don't even know if he's there, maybe Alan Percy of Audio Codes. Uh, he hates it. Uh, we did a webinar together and he really hates it when you're on an IVR and he hears the prompt that says, uh, did you know that answers to your questions can be found on our website? They've already been to your website, and this is why they're calling. So, um, yes, uh, it is an opportunity for you to mitigate perhaps that escalated emotional state, and it is a, a, an opportunity for you to reward them for actually making the call as opposed to handling their problem online. So I recently had a weird experience. Um, I ordered a pasta attachment for my KitchenAid uh, mixer and I ordered it online and paid for it and it didn't show up. So I actually called KitchenAid Canada and I talked to a rep there who said, oh yeah, that, that item is back ordered. And I wouldn't have known that from the website. They didn't let me know. So she actually backed out of that order, put me at the front of the queue for when they came back in stock, refunded me what I paid and charged me less because she said that it's actually cheaper if you call your order in as opposed to ordering online. And I had no idea. Oh, and I got free shipping too. And it showed up right away. So sometimes there is a way to incentivize callers or reward them for the actual idea that they carved out the time to pick up the phone to call you. How to fix number nine with the choices being too similar or confusingly alike the IVR, again, is for you to organize the callers and make best use of your staff. It is not on the caller to feel the repercussions of making that wrong choice and possibly having to go through the menu all over again. So again, make your prompts distinct from each other and it will eliminate confusion. As for number eight, a horrible IVR is expected. IVRs are notoriously needlessly complicated. Make it simple for callers to arrive at service. Pretty self-explanatory. Callers don't know what a good IVR is. Well, you, as somebody who perhaps writes IVR systems for your end users or advises your customers on what they should include in their IVR, you have a rare opportunity to do something different and change the industry. And I know that sounds hugely hyperbolic, but it, it's true. There are so many cliches in phone systems that just keep getting recreated. Phrases like, please listen to the entire menu before making your choice, or please listen carefully as our menu has recently changed. Callers don't care. 
And these phrases keep getting written into systems just because we're so used to hearing them. So we can get so used to hearing better phrasing and more efficient prompts. And it's up to the people that design IVRs to sort of raise the bar in the industry. It can be made better. As for number six, callers don't want to take it on the agent, but the IVR sets them up to do so. If callers are in a hostile mood, and again, make that assumption that they may be, the IVR probably made them that way or contributed to their emotional state. Um, another thing that I've noticed in the live service, the call center industry, is a lot of live agents are checking the caller's expectations about how they would like to see the problem resolve. So I just think that's an amazing thing that call center agents can do. I think it's it forms a bond and it forms almost like a little bit of a let's work on the problem together thing. So check the caller's expectations. It also needs to be said that a lot of IVRs at the end will say something like, please stay on the line and take our short five question survey. And I, I think callers would be more inclined to do that if they felt that they had a rapport with the agent. As for number five, your IVR is too confusing. Keep it simple. Pretty self-explanatory. As for the IVR being too long, callers are used to IVRs that are horrible and gobble up time. But too many options, again, five or six max, too verbose. So, you know, again, stretching it out and having too much text in the opening greeting. And again, if you want to talk about things like ways in which your company is amazing or talk in a detailed way about the products that you offer, save that for an on-hold system. And do not do that in an IVR. Get the caller through the process and to live service as quickly as you can. As for the caller wanting a solution to their problem, they're not interested in how the IVR helps your workflow. They won't know what's wrong with your IVR. They only know that it's not and that it's frustrating them, unless they're me. So uh, with, my, with what I do for a living, if I have to call a company and I've had a bad experience on their IVR and I feel like I have a good rapport with the agent, I might say something like, by the way, your IVR needs to be shorter and you had a couple of prompts that were too similar, blah, blah, blah. And usually they'll say, oh, that's interesting. I have no idea who to talk to because a lot of the live call center agents have no idea who their telephony people are. But yeah. As for number two, a waste of time is perceived as a good bargain if they can arrive at a solution. Unfortunately, callers will tolerate a great deal of nonsense. But why should they have to? And again, it's an opportunity for you to change the paradigm and make a phone system easy to use and, you know, even fun to use. And for number one, they want to feel set up for success. It takes surprisingly little to empower your callers and make them feel like they're winning in the call. And unfortunately, it also takes very little to make them feel powerless. And that is the word that I would choose. I think that once you have invested a great deal of time on the phone with a company, you do feel powerless. So make them a, a partner in the solution that you're coming up with. With my belief of wasting the caller's time and patience being inexcusable, callers know that if things go sideways or they get transferred, um, the whole thing could start over again. And that's the caller's worst nightmare. Um, I can't remember where I was calling, but I had to call in for a second time because the problem persisted. And um, the, the agent that I talked to the second time said, oh, okay, if you can give me a second, um, I'll just read over the transcript and the notes of your previous call. And I went, oh, God, there's notes. I was so happy. Um, that's a great CRM feature that will give the caller some continuity. You know, there's, there's no reasonable expectation that they'll talk to the same agent again. But um, very, very good CRM and note-taking and transcription of the previous call will go a long way, again, to making the caller feel like they're being heard and that they were heard before and that there's an ongoing relationship with the company. So I've come up with a little bit of a checklist. Again, if you're in the position to actually write IVR scripts or advise your customers about what they should have in their IVR, 
here's a little bit of a checklist for you to pay attention to. So make sure your IVR reflects your brand or your personality. So I'm finding more and more of my clients want a persona. They actually want me to visit their website, call into their existing IVR, and get a feel for the kind of company they are, and they want that voice to be an extension of their brand, which is fantastic because there's really nothing worse than being kind of lured by a website that you think is really, really neat, and you call the company, and you're getting kind of a tired staffer that said, you know, thank you for calling XYZ. So it's, there's a weird disconnect if the phone system doesn't dovetail with that brand or personality of the company. Another thing that you should do is ensure that your IVR is concise in its wording and choices. So again, getting back to making sure that it's as fast and as quick and as efficient as possible and avoid those cliches, that whole, the menu's changed, just get rid of that. Uh, be sincere in your connection with your callers. So thank them sincerely. Again, check their expectations. Welcome them back, and especially if uh, the live agents have had a chance to take a look at the live transcription. And um, I'm really not a big fan of canned scripts. I understand that a lot of live agents need to have a little bit of a script um, so that they can you know, go through their checklist. But um, I really hate it when I encounter somebody that says something like, that's a terrible problem. I'm sure that's very frustrating. I'm going to work with you to get to a solution. You know, something that sounds very canned. So I think call center agents should be almost like actors that have the script memorized, but they're able to paraphrase it in their own words, if that makes sense. And here's another really important point that a lot of people don't really acknowledge that much. You need to acknowledge that your IVR is not a substitute for high quality live contact. So it can only take you so far and the IVR should be viewed almost as though a really good prep for the caller to have that live agent experience. It is not a substitute, and it should not be an entirely turnkey self-serve solution because that's, you know, they've already been online again. So they're calling in for a specific reason. So make sure that the IVR um, is a good gateway for them to get to really high quality live contact. Hopefully that makes sense. So this is my contact information and uh, make sure you reach out if you have any end users that uh, need IVR. So yeah, I just like to wrap it up by just saying that, you know, I've been voicing IVR for almost 25 years. Yes, I started when I was 15 and uh, I, I truly love IVR. I've seen a huge evolution in IVR from you know, the, the automaton sound to a really conversational, uh, friendly, accessible tone. And so I do care about the evolution of IVR, as I hope you do as well. And uh, I'm just interested in making sure that people are aware of things that they can do to eliminate caller frustration and to uh, improve that interaction on the phone. Because even with all the uh, different ways we have people reaching companies, IVR will still be a thing. So um, I guess at this point, I would love to invite questions from the chat utility or anything live. That would be great too. Thank you so much, Allison. My pleasure. But yeah, oh, thank you. if uh, either virtually or I guess I should say remote, uh, because then more you look like the virtual people. But <laughs> if the remote people or the in-person people uh, have any questions whatsoever they'd like to ask, feel free to go ahead. We'll take a couple minutes for Q&A. Hey, Allison. John, how are we on uh, remote questions by chance? Nothing. Nothing? Oh. Go in. Going once, going twice, sold. All right, Allison, well, thank you Great. so much for joining us. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thanks, <laughs> bye.